Hi, welcome to the VC Circle Classroom. I am Kruti Desai, partner of ALMT Legal. Today I am going to be talking to you about demystifying term sheets. I will be covering the following four subtopics. What is a term sheet? Purpose of a term sheet? Why non-binding? Promoters be aware. What is a term sheet? What does it mean? When two or more parties intend to undertake a transaction, for example fundraising, where one party decides to invest into a company, they will come together, discuss and arrive at the broad principles or terms on which the transaction will be consummated. These broad terms are captured into a document which is called the term sheet. It is similar to a letter of intent, heads of agreement, a memorandum of understanding. It essentially records the intention of the parties to enter into a future agreement which would be a comprehensive document and binding between the parties and it will be subject to the completion, satisfactory completion of the due diligence on the company and successful negotiations. What are the key clauses that should be captured in a term sheet? Typically, if uh, in the case of a minority investment uh, in the company by an investor, some of the key clauses that should be captured are, of course, to begin with, the names of the parties, the name of the target company, the name of the investor, the name of the promoters, nature of the business of the company, uh, use of proceeds, uh, the amount that is being invested and uh, the type of investment, for example, is it a debt, equity, convertible instruments, primary, secondary investment, board rights, anti-dilution and preemptive rights of the investor, reserve matters, uh, which is ba basically the in items which require the consent of the investor, non-compete obligations on the part of the promoters, transfer restrictions such as tag-along rights, right of first offer. These may be applied uh, in the case of the investor as well as in the case of promoters. Exit rights of the investors, for example, IPO, which should also which could which would also mention the IPO deadline date and the IRR. Events of default and consequences such as drag along rights, put option, buyback by the company. Binding clauses are also inserted in the in the term sheet. Uh, typically, these would be confidentiality, exclusivity, governing law, expenses. A term sheet is usually entered into for a definite period of time, like 30 days or 45 days or 60 days. And within this time period, the parties must enter into the definitive agreements, failing which the term sheet would lapse unless both parties decide to extend the timeline. What is the purpose of a term sheet? The investor is about to embark on a detailed review and a due diligence on the company. Given the extent of the labor and the efforts and the expense that is going to be incurred, for the purpose of consummating the transaction that is proposed, it makes a great deal of sense to first agree on the general broad concepts and the outline of what the parties intend to undertake. It, it, it greatly reduces the risk uh, of, a, of the parties having a fallout later in the, in, in the stage and, and, and which fallout could have been prevented had these concepts been captured in the term sheet. If, if the parties cannot agree on the contents of the term sheet, then there is no point in going ahead with the transaction or looking into any further details of the due diligence. Once the key elements are set out in writing in the term sheet, it becomes a lot easier for the parties to then negotiate and arrive at a con detailed and legally binding contract. Perhaps the most important aspect of the term sheet is it is the first real step that is taken by the parties towards the consummation of the transaction and it creates a moral commitment for undertaking good faith efforts by the parties to complete the deal.
Why is a term sheet non-binding? Well, a term sheet can be binding as well and it can be non-binding, it can be partially binding as well. If the terms are made binding on the parties, then the term sheet will need to contain a lot more details about the transaction. It must cover all aspects of the transaction and this would require a lot of time, effort, resources and more information about the company on the part of the investor. It all, it, the, one of the other reasons why it is better to have it non-binding is it gives the flexibility to the parties to walk out of the transaction at any given point in time. The term sheet is subject to a detailed review uh, of the company which is done by the investor by conducting a due diligence on the financial aspects, the legal aspects and the business aspects. And in the event that the investor finds uh, great liabilities or certain aspects about the company which it is not comfortable with and, and it does not want to invest in a company which has a certain of these uh, issues, then it should give that flexibility to the company, to the investor to not invest and therefore it is in the benefit of the investor to keep the term sheet non-binding. What should a company and the promoters be aware of while entering into a term sheet uh, with potential investors and VC funds? First and foremost, please remember all all clauses are negotiable. If, if you have other investors who are interested in your company, then you have a stronger bargaining power. In that case, you, you should try and keep your exclusivity period short. What is an exclusivity period? It is the period during which you as a promoter or the company is not allowed to enter into talks or negotiations with any other potential investor. You could even try and uh, uh, impose the same restriction on the on the investor as well, person to which the investor shall not enter into talks with any other target companies for the purpose of investment. Uh, the, the promoters and the company must or should act in good faith. Um, they should be open about all issues, all facts concerning the company, be forthright, there shouldn't be any hidden secrets. Let the investor make an informed decision after being aware of all the possible issues or liabilities concerning the company. Do not commit more than what you can give. For example, there will in, in, in the transfer restrictions, you should carefully look at uh, clauses such as lock-in period, uh, where typically the investor will try to impose a lock-in period for two or three years on the promoters. Try and uh, carve out exceptions to this lock-in period. Uh, for instance, if you would like to transfer to your relatives, or uh, to the affiliates of the company, Clearly specify who shall bear the expenses of the transaction, whether the company will bear it, whether both parties will bear their own costs. If the company is bearing it, then specify the limit to which the company will bear the expenses. Also mention in the event that the transaction does not consummate, then whether each party will bear their own expenses or what is the extent to which the company shall bear the expense. Representations, warranties and indemnities should also be clearly stated as to who is providing for these. Is it the company alone or the company and the promoters are both jointly and severally giving warranties and indemnities. If, you, if the promoter is giving warranties, uh, you must look into these warranties and check if you are in a position to give all the warranties that are stated or you would like to restrict them to the important aspects of the company and not the entire plethora of warranties that the company would generally give. Also bear in mind that the promoters would be personally liable in the event of any such warranties being breached. The promoters should also do their own due diligence and try and make sure that whatever non-compliances, potential liabilities, contingent liabilities that exist in the company are captured in a, in a disclosure letter which is to be entered into at the time of the definitive agreements 
uh, which would a, a disclosure letter would qualify the reps and warranties that have been given by the promoter. To conclude, a term sheet is not an alternate to a legal contract but a stepping stone towards it. I hope this session has given you some insight on demystifying term sheets. This is Kruti Desai signing off. <laughs>